What's good, people? Aversile here, back with a video that isn't about the scripting series. So I thought I'd mix it up, and today we're just going to do like a basic application um, video. Today we're just going to create a basic obby stage system that, you know, when you spawn in, you teleport to the part that represents your stage that you're on. So that's pretty cool, pretty useful to know if you want to make an obby game. It's very quick to do, very easy to do. Um, so let's go ahead and get that. So the first thing we do is we set up the parts. We're going to insert a folder object. We're going to call it checkpoints. So I say checkpoints. You can say stage if you want. But I usually group, when I'm making an obby, I make another folder called stages. And that's going to have the actual stages that I built. And so I say checkpoints just to differentiate them. So checkpoints is going to be the actual buttons that we step on. Uh, buttons, uh, blocks, or whatever you want to call them. And here, here's what I mean. So we get, we just insert a part, right? And I'm gonna make it a stud, just a stud by stud, basically. And then we're gonna flatten it, and just like that, right? And then we can do uh, change the color to like I don't know some green. We do neon. This isn't really the scripting part. This is just like kind of setting us up here. Um, so I'm going to change this color. I don't really like this color. Um, we'll do we'll do this one. We'll edit the transparency to 0.15 just to get rid of that glow a little bit. And we're going to name this one. We're going to go ahead and parent this to the checkpoints folder. We're going to duplicate so that we have another um, checkpoint that we can step on. And we're going to set that to two. So we have check, checkpoint one and checkpoint two. Fairly straightforward. This is going to be, if you haven't already guessed, where we're going to store our actual checkpoint blocks. And you have to set the name as a number um, so that we can actually reference what we're talking about uh, when we iterate over this folder. Uh, you'll get what I mean here in a couple minutes. Um, just set them to the number that you want the stage to be when the player steps on them. Next, we're going to get straight to it. We're going to create, first thing we have to create is leader stats, right? That's the first thing you have to do when you are going to go ahead and make an obby system. Got to start with the leader stats. So we're going to say added unique event to the player service. Basically, it executes when a player object is inserted into the player service. So connect function, we're going to do an anonymous function, and we're going to have an automatic player parameter, which is going to pass the player's um, the player object into our function for us to use. So we're going to say local leader stats. Come on, you you've done this before. Let's be like, if you haven't done this before, I recommend you go ahead and um, watch my beginner series. I do go over leader stats briefly in one of my episodes. I think it's episode nine. I don't remember. Go check that out. Uh, instance dot new folder inside of the player. Oh, leader stats. All right. So basically, we're making a leader stats folder that will insert itself into this specific player's uh, object when they join the game. Then we're going to name it to leader stats because this is the way that Roblox is able to identify that we want to create a leader stats for the players to see. Um, and so, I mean, I can show you very quickly what that looks like, um, but I mean, you should, this should make sense to you. So every player, when they join the game, because it's on server side, so every player is going to be affected by this, um, you're going to, everyone's going to have their little, uh, leader stats folder inside of their player object. Then we can go ahead and insert values into that folder and it's going to create, um, the actual stats. So let's say local stage equals instance, whoopsie instance.new int value inside of the leader status folder. Stage.name equals stage. Stage.value equals one. And the reason I set it to one is because when the player joins the game, I want them to be able to spawn at one. And that will make a lot more sense here in a minute. So now we're going to create an event inside of the player added event called, um, and it's connected to the player object. So it's actually it's actually an event of the player's object. So sorry about that. Um, player dot character added connect function to the character. 
And basically, I made another anonymous function, but this time the parameter that's passed is the character's model. Then we're going to say we want to go ahead and get a table that returns all of the values in the checkpoints folder. So local checkpoints equals workspace dot checkpoints colon get children. So we're going to go ahead and get all these parts back. So now we're going to do four. Um, I don't think we need I. So we're going to do uh, underscore uh, V in pairs. And then we're going to pass the checkpoints as the table we want to uh, iterate. And we're going to say if stage dot value equals to number v dot name then car move to and then we use a vector three so we can just say position we're going to do v dot position don't worry i'm going to explain all this here in a minute but we got to make sure that this works right so theoretically if all right so it says we're going to loop through this checkpoints table, and if at any point when the character spawns, so this is going to run for each individual character when their character is re-added or added for the first time. So if I die or I spawn in for the first time, it's going to execute this function every time, and it's going to define this checkpoints folder. It's going to get the children, so we're going to get these two parts right for right now, but um, you can put an infinite number of stages here if you want. Um, well, obviously you can't, but I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean, but so then we're going to iterate over that checkpoints table. So we're going to get all of these objects. Then we're going to say, well, at, at any point, if stage dot value, so this particular player, so it's going to be different for each player, um, player object. So for, let's say for each individual player that their character is added, do if their stage value so stage dot value, so the, the int value that is inside of the leader stats for that specific player is equal to two number v dot name because v dot name we're talking about these objects here v it's a string right because name is a string inherently and so we have to say two number and the reason I set them as numbers is so that we can convert using this special function this whatever's in here to a number. And we could definitely convert one as a string into a number. But let's say I put the name as one. Well, you can't convert, well, you can't convert this to a number. It's not gonna know. So that's why it's a special feature. Um, if you name an object as a number specifically, um, then you can go ahead and put that v dot name and you can actually convert it to a number. So basically this is saying if stage dot value, so that's a number value, is equal to another number value then remember you can't compare number values and non-number values that's just not logical right then we're going to go ahead and care car, sorry car move to and then we have a, a a vector three value that we pass through here so move to is a special method um, that relates to any model object so character our character model if you remember if you when you spawn in your character model is it's a model so we can actually do this move to method and apply it to our character model. And what move to does is it goes ahead and looks for the primary part in a particular model. So Roblox set it so that humanoid root part is your primary part. So that's what moves when you set move to. So move to goes to your character model and says, okay, what is the primary part of this model? And I'll show you here really quickly. Um, just just so you get what I'm talking about. It's a property of models. Um, so let me load in here, and you see it works. If we go to model. You can see uh, pivot primary part. You don't need to know what pivot is, but this pivot is a very fundamental um, reason why primary parts exist. But we're not talking about pivot. Just understand that a primary part for now, yeah, it says a part that serves as a reference for the model C frame. Basically, the position of this model is going to be set to the primary part. That's all we need to know for now. So when we talk about position, we're talking about the primary part, which is actually the humanoid root part. So when we move this around, this is set. OK, <laughs> it doesn't work that way, but generally it does work. So the humanoid root part is the primary part. 
So move to is a method in models. The character model is a model, and it goes ahead and it looks for the primary part in that model, and then it moves that primary part, which then moves the entire model to whatever you put in this, uh, you pass as an argument. And we did v.position. And position returns a vector 3, which is just three coordinates. There's a difference between vector 3 and C frame. And listen, this might be a little confusing because you don't know what a vector 3 is. You don't know what position, like C frame, all that stuff. What's the difference? For now, just understand that vector 3, position is a vector 3. Um, C frame is, it, it has two components. It has position and orientation. We're not going to talk about C frames. For now, just imagine that there's only one type of position value, which is vector three, which is three dimensions, so X, Y, and Z. V dot position, we're talking about V. So let's say I'm on stage two, and when I spawn in, it's going to check, okay, well, it says that stage dot value, okay, well, it says two equals two because v dot name is two number v dot name is two so it's like all right we got we got the object now we're going to move it to that object's position which is um uh let me check a little where is it uh position yeah so position is a property of and we see if we open it up we get x y and z so yeah that's what we mean when we're, well, we're changing to v dot position we're saying we want the primary part in the character model's position to be equal to v dot position. So v's position, which is two in this case, because our we're assuming that stage dot value is two in our case uh, when we spawn in. All right, so now we figured that out. We played, and then we you saw that we spawned. So now we have to make it so that we can change our stage. Let's go ahead and say, okay, well, let's let's change stage. So thankfully, this part is a little easier. Uh, it's not as heavy. Um, so what we're going to do is the first thing we do, obviously, is we get our checkpoints. So local checkpoints equals uh, workspace dot checkpoints, having some brain fog issues, um, get children. So we have the table. Then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to iterate over this table. So for IV in pairs, checkpoints do uh, typo. So basically, we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at all of the objects in this table, uh, in this folder, sorry. <laughs> um, we're going to say, if, if at any point v is touched, we're going to connect an anonymous function. And we already know we can pass a parameter called hit, which is the object that hit uh, v. So and we're going to say local player equals game dot players get player from character hit dot parent then we're going to say if player then all right so now we know that okay whatever is touching v is a player all right so now we know it's a player now what are we going to do well now we're going to check okay well if player dot leader or no it's leader stats because we're talking about the object in the game dot stage dot value is equal to two number Actually, hold on. It's um, two number v dot name uh, and then minus one. Then we're going to go ahead and say, oh, what was it doing? All right. So player dot leader stats dot stage dot value is plus equal to one. And I'm going to illustrate this first and then I'm going to explain. I'll explain the code. So we spawn in. And we're going to be automatically on stage one. Here we are. Now, over there, we have stage two. Now, according to my change stage script, if at any point V is touched and there's a player, then we're going to go ahead and go into that player, that specific player's leader stats, right? So in this case, I use the actual name of the folder because it's already been created. Then we go into stage. Then we say value. So what is the stage value? It's one. It's equal to two number v dot name. So the one we're gonna we're gonna touch is this minus one. So two minus one is one. So if stage dot value is equal to one, so one is equal to one, then player dot leader stats dot stage value is plus equal to one, which means it's gonna be equal to itself 
plus one. So theoretically, this should work. And it'll change our um, actual int value number, which is going to change on the leader stats. And there we go. So now, when we reset, we know that in our script, uh, let's go back to our server. We go to leader stats, and we say that every time the character is re-added or added for the first time, we're going to go ahead and get the children in the in the checkpoint server. So these two, we're going to say for at, at any point, if stage.value, so for this specific player, is equal to two number v.name. So if it's so we're going to iterate over this, and if at any point we see that the player's stage value is equal to two number of any of these objects, then we're going to go ahead and just move that model to that position. So theoretically, if I were to reset, it would it would say it would definitely match up for this object because I'm on stage two and this is two. If I did two number two, it'd be two, which is the same as my int value. So when I reset, I should spawn on this one instead of this one. And here we are. That is it. That's the system. That's all you have to do. How many lines of code was that? What was that? 13, 19. What was that? 32 lines of code. And not even because some were spaced out. Very simple. Try to remember this stuff. This stuff's important. Working with tables, especially, you got to get used to that stuff. Um, it's very important. Tables, very, very useful. So yeah, that I mean, that's pretty much it. And okay, so yeah, let me explain the logic. So if a player, when we touch V, if we detect a player, and it's equal to, and here's the logic. So basically, I'm checking the player's stage value. If at any point I touch something, and my stage value is one less than V dot name, and why do you think it's, it has to be one less than? because that's the only case where I'm going to allow the player to change their stage value to itself plus one. It's the only time. So only, let's say I had a bunch of objects in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I'm on stage three, only stage four is going to pass this as true when I touch because it's equal to itself minus one. So if I'm on stage three and there's a stage four, only that object is going to meet that condition and therefore that is the only way that the player is going to be able to change their stage so yeah i hope that made sense uh pretty quick little video uh, i hope that made sense if you have any questions about obby systems and like uh maybe other features you, you would want to add into your game i always you know make sure to message below uh leave a comment uh but either way uh until next time i will see you guys later peace